Welcome to the Northwest Area 6 Humor Speech Contest! <laughs> Speaking order is Tim Bolger's first, Stacy Little. Tona is second. Let the contest begin! Tim Bolger, driving a story, driving a story, Tim Bolger. I start this speech off with a question. How many of you actually drive your cars every day? And how many of you think that you're excellent drivers. I'll tell you, I know I'm an excellent driver. Why? Because I literally learned driving through what I call the school of hard knocks. What do I mean by the school of hard knocks? Accidents, <laughs> tickets, lots of time in court, and perhaps maybe even a traffic school thing or two. Let me start off this whole, of, oh, by the way, this is car, I'm 51 years old now, and it's car 24 since high school. Not including the three I had in one month. <laughs> but that's a story for another day. Just imagine you're, you're as a parent of a teenage kid, and you let your son drive out to a practice for athletics. The kid's fairly responsible. He knows about it, but all of a sudden at 10 o'clock, hello, Dad, uh, guess where I'm at? The police station. Oh. <laughs> well, it gets even worse. At about when I was 17 years old, I remember going to wrestling practice. My dad was tired that morning. No, Tim, just go ahead and drive yourself. I don't have to worry about a thing. Little did my dad know that there was two feet of snow on the ground. Second of all, we had what we call a Dodge Maxi Van. These things were huge in the 70s, big block V8 engines, and a big 12-passenger compartment. And here is a 17-year-old driving his way through the snow, fishtailing and all, to wrestling practice which we found out later was canceled. <laughs> well, as I'm driving up a hill, I see this nice little police car at the top. I'm going up the hill, he's coming down the hill, and I bet you, you guess what happened. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> I hit him. Oh, no. I cracked up at 17 <clears throat> years old a Lake in the Hills police car. And that call at 10 o'clock in the morning was from the state authorities saying, Tim and this police car, we have to bring in an impartial authority to figure out where the accident happened. And of course, because it was snowing out, they had to actually chip through the snow to find out where the lane markings were to determine who was at fault. <laughs> no. Maybe a few years later, clean record now, Eight years, no speedy things, no accidents. I decided to get a job delivering pizzas. Freshly out of the service, thinking, ah, it's an easy job, no problem. All of a sudden, traffic violations start racking up. Rolling stops. One mile over the limit. Three miles under the limit. Passing a school bus. Could you believe I wrapped up eight of them in one month? Eight traffic violations in one month, and I had a clean record. Well, here's the rest of the story. We had a sergeant at Lake in the Hills, and we had a tradition at the pizza place to get the police half off their pizzas. <laughs> but one day, off duty sergeant comes in, and he's a little bit soused, and he demands his pizza to be half off, and the owner says, no, we want you to get out of here because you're off duty, and uh, Cop kept pushing and pushing and he said, fine, no, no, half off 
Douglas Coast revoked. And what did he do after that? Not only was it revoked at our pizza place, but he went around and called the other three that also gave him the half off discount. So now the cops have to pay full price for their pizzas. And of course, now that they have to pay full price for their pizzas, they start following the pizza drivers. <laughs> Would you believe that within a month period, over the entire staff of the Rosati's crew at that point, there was almost 52 separate violations <laughs> racked up over time. And when I had to go to traffic court for all eight violations, and I had, I had a map, I had the dates and times of the violations, I had the date and time of that incident at the pizza place. Now try to explain this in front of a judge. All he looked at me was he said, would you be willing to file a lawsuit against the village of Lake in the Hills for harassment? I says, Your Honor, I've got no choice. And all of a sudden, him and the village attorney are consulting. And they consult some more. And I'm waiting. Five minutes passes. Ten minutes passes. And all of a sudden, they tell me, hey, we are going to give you a deal. What's that? <clears throat> If you guys remember the movie Animal House and that famous scene where the frat house is going on, double secret probation. The judge tells me, eight tickets, pay your court costs, double secret probation. Well, needless to say, I was happy as a clam. I not only it still cost me $450 at the time, but I still had my license. And yes, the cops did get their half off discount again. There was a nice apology letter from Jim Wales, the police department commissioner at Lake in the Hills. And yes, the other drivers too also got supervision, but got off a lot less than I did. To sum the story up, after I learned that lesson, I started doing things like following the two-second rule, <laughs> that don't speed under any circumstance whatsoever. Ah, the toll road you can get away with once in a while. But after that incident, maybe a few more cars, because it was driving 15 hours a day, I think now I'm an excellent driver, Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> while the judges uh, mark their ballot. Our next contestant, Stacy Latona, born sucking on a lemon, <laughs> born <laughs> sucking on a lemon, Stacy Latona.
I grew up in a Greek immigrant family. And like most Greek immigrant families, my family was totally convinced that the rest of America had it all backwards. Using salt and pepper as a condiment instead of lemons was one example. While I was at school, I hung out with my American <coughs> friends. We talked about American music and American holidays like Thanksgiving. But when I got home, Greek music was the only music playing. It wasn't the Greek music you're used to hearing when you walk into a Greek restaurant. It was Greek folk music. It has a very distinct and unusual sound. It sounds like somebody is strangling a bellowing goat. <laughs> <laughs> and Thanksgiving feasts were truly feasts. 40 people plus aunts, uncles, grandparents, cousins, all gathered around two long banquet tables, pots and pans full of food enough to feed twice as many people, and we all sat around and enjoyed eating lamb with lemon sauce. We had spagopita, feta cheese, calamata olives, just like the pilgrims. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm proud of my heritage. I'm proud that my ancestors invented democracy, philosophy, the Olympic Games, mathematics. What I'm most proud of is that my people celebrate holidays late. Greek Easter is one week after regular Easter. I'm proud of the fact that we are the only people that can claim to have risen Jesus for a second time in a week. <laughs> Sometimes Greek Easter is five weeks late, but that's good for two reasons. Number one, it's later in the season, and we may have a more successful roasting a, a lamb on a spit. And number two, our candy is cheap. <laughs> we buy the broken chocolate bunnies and the rock hard beans none of you bought. It took me a few Easter holidays to realize that chocolate bunnies actually have ears. <laughs> <clears throat> One bad memory of Easter holidays. We did this because it was tradition. After a three hour long church service, which began at midnight, we would come home and eat a stew of lamb innards, liver, lungs, Kidneys, intestines, you can imagine the smell. Oh, we try to cover it up, we threw onions and a whole bunch of dill in there. But any time I would complain of the smell, my parents would say, just squeeze a little lemon on top, that will do the trick. <laughs> Spring car drives, they were my family's favorite, and it was a tradition also. Inevitably, Every time we'd go for a car drive in the spring, my father would come to a screeching, squealing halt on the side of the road. Before I could dislodge myself from the back seat floor, mm -hmm. my parents would be out with knives in hand and bags in hand. They would walk up the grassy embankment, bend over, and harvest dandelions. They'd bring them home, cook them, and serve them with a drizzling of olive oil and a squeeze of lemon juice. <laughs> to this day, I have not owned up to my American friends that my parents used to pick weeds from the side of the road. <laughs> my Diane, my grandmother, died at the ripe old age of 96, never being sick one day in her life. When I was younger, I would ask her, what is the secret of your long, healthy life? Her answer was always the same. Honey, you work hard, you will live a long life. Even in my 12-year-old mind, I thought, there's got to be something else to this. And my suspicions were confirmed the day I cut the inside of my cheek, eating some hard candy. I went to Yaya for help, and help healing my wound. She took me by the hand, took me in her bedroom, closed the door, opened her closet, reached on the top shelf, and produced a bottle of clear liquid. Oh. Immediately I thought, lemon juice. But it didn't have the consistency. It wasn't cloudy enough to be lemon juice. Then I thought, well, holy blessed lemon juice. <laughs> Until I read the label. My 4 foot 11, 85 pound grandmother had stashed away a bottle of ouzo. <laughs> she went to her nightstand, pulled out a shot glass, poured me a shot glass of this li liquor, 
then reached in her pocket and took out half a lemon wrapped in foil, <laughs> <laughs> squeezed the drop into the shot glass and told me to swig it and kind of swish it around in my mouth, concentrating on the sore spot, and to swallow the rest. Then she told me that she had used ouzo all her life <clears throat> to cure anything from toothaches to headaches to preventing colds. <laughs> I love lemons and I cook with them often. I like to think I work hard, and I do indulge in the occasional shot of ouzo. <laughs> some time ago, I reached back to my ancient roots, and I did some mathematical calculations, and I figured I would live to be 150. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> Toastmaster, and all the bells. Wasn't that a great contest, or what? Yeah. Well, one of the contestants offered to, for refreshments, and have lamb with lemon, but uh, she was uh, decided not uh, to do that might impress the judging, you know, so, yeah. so we cited against that. <clears throat> so let's get a chance to know these two humorous uh, speaking contestants. Uh, first speaking was Tim Bolger. <laughs> for what I call a 
no insurance violation. I realized that I had needed what they call a form SR-22. I had valid insurance, but they suspended my license and I didn't know about it. So late night at about 3 o'clock in the morning, because I went off to get one of these damn things, <laughs> a pack, I got pulled over and uh, next thing you know, I'm being cut off with in handcuffs. Probably would have made a much better speed story, but I also considered a friend of mine telling the story is a little too embarrassing to tell in front of everybody. Maybe they should have not taken his place. <laughs> so your interests are the Cubs. Yeah. But my question is why? <laughs> <laughs> you have to take what we call a leap of faith. You look at it like this, okay? We started off with the White Sox on the south side, then all of a sudden we hit the Bulls. The Blackhawks, yeah, we even threw a president in there. But luck, my friends, is moving north. So it's going to be the Cubs' turn soon enough. Starts in the south, they move north. So I figured, <coughs> you also have to remember something else. The Beatles' manager, his last name, and the Cubs' manager's last name are the same. <laughs> so I figured, hey, if you can do it for the, for the Cubs, he already did it for the Beatles. So how long do you have the problem of being too optimistic? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, uh, I guess I'm optimistically optimistic. I, I, I just have a, 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 a good quality view on life that always works and wants to move forward. And then, of course, I always crash in the eighth and the eighth inning. Nothing that doesn't work. You list your occupation as a sales representative? What I do at, uh, is work for a company called Franklin Cash Register, and I put consumer electronics online through eBay and Amazon. We list the product, we fulfill the product through UPS, and it's a good company. If you're looking for a camcorder or a cordless phone, look up Good as New Electronics as the eBay store. That's the one I run. We are a master power seller on eBay. I'm very proud of the fact. The other thing is, too, that might have helped that I previously had nine years at a company called UBIT.com, which was an online auction house for nine years before starting this. And it says that you're, just, you're taping all the division contests, and I, uh, you're not taping all the area contests, too, no, are you? No, no, no. You have to break it off somehow. The videography started with me about five years ago. And as I said, I, it started when I was taking a fellow postmaster to give a really inspirational speech. That's a story for another time. But I've got a website that hosts the stuff. I've got a good YouTube account. That's, I think the present account's got 115 uploaded videos right now on it. Uh, I'll be taping all the division contests. And you, you can access them all right now for the last three contest seasons if you go to www.timsvideo.com. It's very easy to look. As far as Toastmasters are concerned, I can't make it any easier. Just go to the site, look at the link, and it's there. Well, on behalf of all the Toastmasters of Northwest Division, thank you for competing. Thank you. As the winner of the last year's Humor Speech Contest, watching yourself in the contest helped me improve greatly in it. And the, uh, the best thing that I can give to the two contestants here, if they would like to be at the district and to win the district, is three things. Number one, practice. Number two, practice. And number three, <laughs> practice. <laughs> Our second speaker was Stacy Latona. Stacy, come on up. <laughs> Stacy, how long have you been in Toastmasters? Two years, I think, almost to the day. Huh. And what club are you representing? Um, Prospect 1500, friendliest club in the world. Yes. <laughs> and do you hold any office in the VP of membership? What does a VP of membership do to get members in the club? 
talk to anybody, anybody you come across about Toastmasters. Wear your Toastmasters pen whenever you can to incite people to ask about it. At work, friends, book club people. Your notable accomplishment is, you want to tell the people? A notable accomplishment? Yeah, that you wrote down. CC? The completer CC. That means... Said more clubs in the area contest, so you could have been competing against yourself if you were in top. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you had a very good uh, title, Born uh, Sucking on a Lemon. <laughs> and it's always good when you talk about a personal experience in a humorous talk. But uh, the question I have with that what made you come up with the idea of talking about your family? And is any of your family ever going to hear that speech? Some have. <laughs> I've actually sent it out to my sister for some critiquing. I, it's nothing new. You know, <laughs> we know how we are. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, <laughs> Try to look as a condiment. It's the best. <laughs> it's the low calorie. Yes. <laughs> It's the real Windex. Yes, the it's real the real <laughs> Yeah. Well, on behalf of the Toastmasters in the Northwest Area 6, uh, <laughs> congratulate you. And thank you so much. At this time, I'd like to call the elector in our area governor, Blake Reed. <laughs> speech contest, Diane Bolish.
our Northwest Division Governor, if you want to talk about the upcoming contest a little bit more in detail. So I am here to tell you, remind you, prod you, cajole you, beg you, plead with you, suggest that October 27th you join us at the Holiday Inn Willowbrook for our District 30 Fall Conference. The keynote speaker, as you can see here, is Craig Valentine. Craig is a former world champion of public speaking and will be presenting a actually a series of presentations. His first responsibility of the day is he will be speaking to the Achievers Breakfast. So all of those, all Toastmasters in the district who reach an educational goal, or have reached one rather, between the last, the date of the last conference in April. late April and October 20th, will be invited to <coughs> breakfast at the a free breakfast at the conference, and Greg Valentine will be the keynote speaker for that event. He will also be speaking during the day, but will be the featured, will present the featured keynote speech at the evening dinner as well. During the course of the day, the two big events are the district level evaluations, speech evaluation contests, and the district finals of the humorous speech contest. So Diane and Stacy will be continuing on from here to compete at the division level which I mentioned earlier, uh, September 29th, the winners of each of the eight division contests will be competing against each other in the district finals held at the fall conference. Also happening at the fall conference will be a district-wide business meeting for club presidents and club vice presidents of education, as well as a series of educational and professional development seminars during the late afternoon, or late morning and into the afternoon. Fun times, learning times, lots of Toastmasters. There are 4,000 members in the Chicago land area. I don't think they'll all be there, but they will be still <laughs> terrific opportunities for networking, having a good time, and getting to know other Toastmasters. about concluded with our speech contest. What a, another advice I can give to the contestants, especially in the humorous uh, Stacy, is to contact John and ask, tell him that you want to give that speech to as many Toastmaster clubs as you can before the division contest. And then continue that if you win the division to do that at the district level. Because I have a little secret to tell you. I've been in Toastmasters 32 years. And up until last year, I had reservations about speaking in front of the District 30 and forgetting lines. And that was the main thing that was suggested to go to other clubs and do it. And I kept on doing it. And I found out is that's what I needed to do all along if I wanted to win that contest is not only be more comfortable giving the speech, but follow the suggested improvements in the evaluation. I had an individual form for evaluation and I handed it out to all the club members and I asked each one of them to evaluate me. And not only did you get one evaluation orally, <coughs> excuse me, but you also got from every member of the club. Now, but sometimes that can be depressing because <laughs> yeah. I went to one club. It was on, a, on 7 o'clock on a Monday morning. 
<laughs> Not one person laughed during my speech. And, and out of all the clubs I visited, they gave me the worst evaluations and so forth. But don't, don't let the bad evaluations, but if, if it keeps on coming up on various clubs, then maybe you need to give it a rest on a particular one. That's my take on uh, trying to win the humor speech contest. I'm doing it, but I was honored to be your Toastmaster for the evening. I think our judges and our area governor, Glenn Reed, did a terrific job. I just wish that more clubs would represent, be represented here. We only had two of our four clubs, 50% of our clubs in this area. The only way that we can get more participation is to let those club members know we miss them at the area contest. Good night and have a good following week. The contest is over.